How's it going everyone? Welcome to Earthquake, episode 12, maybe 13, let's say 12. Nah, it's 13. So as you know, we got promoted last season with bells on, we were belting. So how do you approach the pre-season when you're going up to a higher league? There's two, there's two ways of doing it. Does your squad need a massive overhaul, which I've had to do in the past, or on a season like we've just had, where you've had a really successful season, you don't need to change too much, you just need to make little tweaks and get some upgrades in. That's what we're going to focus on today what to look for in your upgrades. On a side note, the media are predicting that we're going to finish 23rd. Cheeky shits. So what we're looking at is, are my players good enough to make the jump up into League 1 from League 2 in our case? 99% of my players I believe are good enough, but there's certain things we can look for to upgrade. Now the previous season was a good example of this. Montel Gibson is a Dalor legend. He scored 150 goals ish in our rise from the Van North. However, we got to League Two and it didn't really happen for him. He was okay, but we just needed a little upgrade. We upgraded last season to Joshua Coyote. Now you can see from this screen here, Joshua Coyote is a blue. He's just that little bit better in all aspects than Montel. On key attributes, his ratings are just a little bit higher. They're one or two grades up, which will make a massive difference. Striker, for example, his finishing is 12. Montel's was 9. That's pretty huge. Same goes for composure, off the ball, even his pace. He's just an all-round better player. So what are we looking for in these jumps up the league? So this is what I look for. That's an important point, by the way. It's what I look for. It's not a definitive answer. This is just the way I like to approach things. So when I'm in the National League... I'm looking for key attributes to be in the 8 to 10 range. So if it's a centre back, for example, I'm looking for his heading to be in that range, his marking and his positioning. See what I'm saying? When we get to League 2, we're going to try and upgrade it to a 10 to 12 range. So if I've got players in the National League that got us promoted that aren't quite at that level, that's what I'll look for. I'll look for that little bump up. Same goes for League 1, going for key attributes in the 11 to 13 range. Just so we've got that little bit of extra quality. So even if they did well in the leagues prior, you may find that they're not going to be able to make that step up. So it's good to have some other players who can cover those key attributes at a higher level. So you remember the last episode I said I was going to keep faith with a lot of my team from Darlow. Having reviewed it all, I brought in a few players. Not many, just a few. So the transfer business. Now, as I've just said, I needed a little upgrade in key areas. Last season's keeper and the keeper I've had right the way through has been Jack McIntyre, but I've had to make a tough decision and I've gone for James Trafford in from Blackburn for 24,000. So the upgrades for James Trafford, the slight in areas, but the key ones is aerialness, for example, communication and his shot stopping. Key zones for keepers needed a slight upgrade. We've still got Jack McIntyre in for another season on loan, which will make it four years on loan from Peterborough. But we've upgraded to James Trafford in the sticks. This is a nice signing, Idris El Muzuni. How cool is that name for a start? And look at his attributes, an all-round player that's going to bring a little bit of quality to us. I brought him in with an eye on playing on the inverted wide position where Bobby Kamwa plays. Bobby Kamwa's a legend, but he hasn't got the all-round attributes that this kid has. If you remember, we bought Bobby Kamwa in on a free last season from Dagenham and Redbridge, and he was insane. He scored 14 goals, 10 assists. He was brilliant, but we have moved up now, and looking at that you can see the higher level that El Mazzuni has over Bobby Kamwa but I am going to stay a lot to Bobby he's going to start the season and it's up to El Mazzuni to work his way in but look at the upgrades the only thing Bobby's got on him is the physicals and it's only by one digit everything else it's a huge upgrade Enoch Asante now this one's up in the balance where he's going to take Rio's place because as you can see he's an upgrade in areas physicals speed aerial but rio's got him on technicalness so they're going to rotate that's another key one if you're going to get players in make sure they're capable of playing in the starting 11 not just to fill the bench up these two are going to go head to head for the target man role this season's tactic we can't change after last season can we when we were 105 points tactic video just above you there we're going to stick as we were, we're going to see how it goes for the first few games of the season. 
if we need to tweak it, we, we've got the ability to tweak it. I do have an away formation, which are going to give respect to League One as well. And it's this one, and I haven't yet named it yet, which is rubbish of me. There we go. We lose a striker, we drop him into a anchor midfield role, and we rely on the width to support the striker. And even his role changes to a pressing forward, because he's going to do a lot of work up there by himself. I'm reluctant to use that one. I'm an attacking manager at heart, but if I need to use that, I will use that, especially away from home against some of the big teams, such as Sunderland, I do believe, in our league. So we've been promoted, other changes we made, I requested an extra coaching staff, I got the extra coaching staff, so we're going to get a little bit better there. You'll be able to see on the next screen the effect that's had. Okay, lots of coaches now. When I first got to this club, back on episode one, there was me, an assistant manager, a physio, and that was it. But now, we've got some decent coaches in there. Some names you might remember, I mean, look at the picture there, Edgar David is in. We've got John O'Shea as well. Dimitri Carey, do you remember him from Chelsea? He's our keeper coach. He's actually one we're probably looking to upgrade. He's not as good as he, we could be. And we've got Steve Sidwell in as an under-23s manager. Decent, but again, if we get to Championship, he'll be getting upgraded. John Stead, very good all-round coach. And the last one we just brought in was Rhys Bennett. Again, all-round brilliant defensive coach. So you can upgrade your staff as well. Okay, pre-season is done. It was faultless. We played the 4 4 2 right the way through. Some good results you can see there. We beat Celtic 4-2. As soon as I saw that one, the Celtic game, I thought, we're going to stick with this 4-4-2 because if we can take down Celtic and the team they put out, we can do something. We can do something here. A few normal games against Ultram and Burton. A good home, home draw against Crystal Palace 2-2. And then you can probably see that sneaky result there after I played one game of the season. I thought, let's have a little look. And Fleetwood got it. Yeah, so here we go. This was the game against Fleetwood. We started like a house on fire. This was in the 16th minute. Row to Bobby Camway. I remember I said I was a keeper in the team. He's rose to the challenge of a header at the back stick. Corners, they're still working. Hock and Hull with a near post boomer. Gave away a penalty. Omar Bogle put that in. 2-1 at half time. And then we just went schizo. Rio Griffiths started this game. Laid it back to Bobby Camway again. Danny Williams. How would you like that? In it goes. That was number three. Four came. Williams. To Coyote, just dropping off. Lovely ball to Kamwa. There again, there he is. Can't drop him yet. That was number four. Last minute. Here we go again. Bobby Kamwa, Rio Griffiths. Salam off the bench to Coyote. And Coyote stuck it in. So our first game of the season ended with a 5-1 smashing of Fleetwood. So we'll leave this episode there. And we will savour that sight of Darlow being on top of League One. Because in honesty... It might be the last time we see that. Remember, we are expected by those glorious media gimps to finish down here in 23rd. So we've started the right way. Where will we be? I'm going to go offline now, play a few games. You know, I guess sometimes get carried away. So when we come back, could be 30 games, could be the end of the season. But we'll see how it goes.